Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as his sunnah, he gives out a medicine. And this medicine is very important for the nafs. And the medicine of al-ibtila, al-ibtila. And this is trials, tribulations, and affliction. That as human beings, we dislike this medicine just as the child hates to take the medicine because of the taste. Even though within that medicine lies a cure. So this medicine of al-ibtila, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uses this as a sunnah to bring the Muslims, to bring the believers closer to him. But as human beings, many times we dislike this medicine. But this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah he says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدٍ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said that uh, we created you in, in trial and struggle and toil. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's giving us an explanation of what this life, this life is synonymous with trial and struggle. And many times we don't like the taste, we don't like the medicine of al-ibtila. When this is very important for our growth, for the growth of the nafs. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِنَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا so Allah, he explains that he who created life and death so that he may try you, so that he may test you to see who is best in their conduct. And Allah, he further in the Quran, he explains, So this reality that we're going to experience khawf, we're going to be shaken in our very souls where we are become anxious and we, where we experience stress, this feeling of anxiety. We're going to go through moments of uncertainty where our hearts are going to beat out of our chest because we don't know what lies ahead in the future. We're going to experience hunger in this life. And the hunger is not always about food. Perhaps we eat too much in the West. Perhaps we eat too much, way too much. But we may experience hunger in another way. We may feel deprived. Some of the brothers who aren't married yet may feel hungry, may feel deprived for a mate. Same thing with the sisters. They may feel hungry and deprived for companionship. Well, do we're going to experience a loss in our wealth. I recall I invested my money, I got a, uh, maybe a tax return or something, I saved up some money and I invested in a business. And I watched my investment crumble. And I, I got sad and sadder and sadder as I watched my investment crumble. Till eventually the business was no more. And my investment was no longer in existence. We're going to experience a loss of lives. How many people have we known who, there was a, a couple, they had been married for 40 years, and the husband waits only to find his wife, his companion for 40 years, who had shared some of his most intimate moments with, had passed away. People who have children, who they watch their children grow up, they invest so much in their children, only to find that their child has passed away before them. You're going to lose, really, the fruits of your toil as the farmer plants his crops and then the weather changes and he watches his crops disappear. He watches the time that he put in those crops. He watches it really disperse from him and is no longer in existence. And we look at this reality is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tried the best of his servants. And we look at Adam alayhi salam, tried and tested the best, the most beloved of our servants. Nuh alayhi salam, tried and tested. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you, you, when you're trying to save your son, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِكَ He is not from your family. Having to leave his son behind, tried and tested. And we look at Ayyub, Job tried and tested. Ibrahim 
tried and tested, given the test of having to face his son and tell his son that he's going to have to take his life, tried and tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah tries the best of his servants, then there has to be something sweet in al-ibtila. There has to be something sweet in al-ibtila. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, man yuridi Allah bi khayrin yuslib minhu. He says that when Allah wants good for his servant, he tries him. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for us, he tries us. The most beloved of Allah's servants tried. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we look at his life. His life, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never met his father. I can't imagine never meeting my father. I live with my father to this day. I can't imagine never meeting my father who gives me nasiha, who is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his mother passed away when he was six. Imagine this. I can't imagine, I love my mother. You know, when I'm feeling down, my mother, she cooks for me. Alhamdulillah. When I call my mother, my mother always, she brings my mood up. I call my mother for advice. Can't imagine being deprived of the wisdom of my mother. And we look at the Prophet Sallallahu his mother passing away at six years old, and what? He never got an opportunity to get, really, he was deprived of the, the, uh, the mercy that the mother has to offer. This is Al-Ibtila. And this is the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his servants who is being tried. So there has to be something sweet in al-ibtila, trials and afflictions and tribulations. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam placed in the, uh, the care of his grandfather, eight years old for a couple of years, his grandfather passes away. And we look at this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of his children except Fatima, outlived him, or, or, or passed away before he passed away. Imagine your, your, your children passing away before you pass away. This is the trials and tribulations that the most beloved, the, the, the most beloved to Allah, the most beloved servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to go through. So many times we become arrogant and think that we're not supposed to be tried or tested. No. We have to begin to embrace our tests. Then we have an enemy named Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayy, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam imagined making salat. Many of us we don't look at the blessing of just coming to salat in jama'ah and being able to pray alongside the brothers and being able to bow down on to prostrate on beautiful carpet. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his enemy Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayy. When the Prophet Sallallahu was in his prayer, when he was making his prayer, Uqba came from behind him and he took his robe and choked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was in prayer. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq had to come and push Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt off of him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in sajda, and imagine, have we ever been through this? Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, took the placenta of a slaughtered camel and hurled it onto the back of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his daughter being present, having to experience this humiliation that her father had to go through. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walking through the streets one day and someone just throwing dirt at his face and him having to go home and when he went home, his daughter began to weep as she began to clean his face from the dirt. And the Prophet وسلم, reminding her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to protect your father. There's something that's sweet in al-ibtila if the most beloved servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to go through these trials and struggles and affliction. And we look at this reality as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his two staunchest supporters, his uncle passing away, and also 
his wife passing away around the same time, within the same year. And from your wife, this mawadda wa rahmah, this, this comfort, this love that you receive from your wife, the support that he received from his wife Khadija and the Prophet وسلم, having to be deprived of that after over 20 years of marriage to a mother Khadija radiallahu anha. So the Prophet وسلم, we have to look at his experience. There's two things that we can learn in the lesson of this. Is that the Prophet وسلم, he taught us how to go through struggle. He taught us how to overcome our trials and our tribulations in life. And the Muslims who were with him, who had to also go through battle, they lost the closest to them, the battle of Badr, when the Muslims had to fight their family members. This was a family reunion, having to fight your own father. Imagine this, having to fight your cousins, your relatives. Imagine this. Having to go through this, they taught us how to really overcome our trials and our tribulations and afflictions. They went through things so we don't have to go through the same things. And we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing, for allowing other people to be models for us. Others who have overcome struggle, trials and afflictions. So when we face trials and afflictions, we're able to overcome these trials and afflictions by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we look at this reality and some of the lessons that we learn from the Qur'an as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, Allah is the one who deserves our trust, okay? When people abandon us, some of us will go through relationships and it's not going to last. How many times have we heard, even for me, being in a position of imam, how many times have I heard of these failed relationships? How people, they perhaps thought that so-and-so was their soulmate, only to find so-and-so was perhaps unfaithful to them. At the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that we place our trust in. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will outlast, outlast the promises and the claims of other individuals. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa having the sword placed in his face as he rests. And to khafuni, the individual wondering if the Prophet is afraid of him. And the he said, who's going to protect you from me? Who's going to protect you from me? And the Prophet he said, Allah. So we need to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the lessons that we learn in facing al-ibtila in the Qur'an, there's two types of worshippers, two blameworthy types of worshippers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's telling us don't become like these individuals. Allah, he mentions one type of worshipper. Allah, he's telling us about the individual who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they're on the edge. And when good befalls them, they're content. But when trouble comes to them and touches them, fitna befalls them, struggle, tribulation befalls them, they turn on their faces in disbelief. And they lose in this life and the akhirah. So imagine the individuals when their car is riding smooth. They're driving on the freeway. Allah. And they're, they're calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're thanking Allah. They're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then something happens to their car, their vehicle. And they no longer call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're no longer content. And they begin swearing and cursing. And they begin upset. They lose all faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The individual, when it's all good, when they have a good job, when their wife is there, and their wife is feeding them and talking good to them, and then when they're deprived of this, before being deprived of this, they're happy. I'm content. And it's all good. But when this is removed from them, they go back to disbelief. 
They go back to disbelief. There was a brother, I knew a friend of mine. When he had his wife, it was all good. It was all good. He was at the masjid. I saw him at the masjid. He had a big smile on his face and he was talking good. But his wife left him and I no longer saw him at the masjid. It was all bad. And when I ran into him, he says, I'm going through something. I'm not coming to the masjid. I haven't been making my salat. And this is a part-time worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't want to become the one when everything is good, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but when it's removed from us, then we fall into disbelief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us about the other type of worship. So Allah he talks about <coughs> the individual that who was touched by harm. And then they call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabb. So this is the individual who they're not praising Allah when their car is driving real good. And then when they get the flat tire, they're on the side of the freeway. Ya Rabb. Ya Rabb, I need you now. This is the individual who they only call on Allah doing trials and affliction. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes him from this trial and affliction, they forget who they called on before when they were in trial and affliction. This is another individual who is a part-time worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The individual who, when their mate is there and faithful and giving them good words and support and motivation, then they don't even come to the masjid. But as soon as their mate leaves, they run to the masjid, Ya Rabb. Or the one who has a job, who forgets to call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he's getting a good paycheck. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes this drop job and tries them, then they call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the secret is to call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all times, being full time. Whether you have a good job or you don't have a job at all, calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In all your states, alhamdulillah ala kulli hal, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of your states, whether trial and affliction. And there's some other lessons that we can learn from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See, many times we're driving and we get cut off on the road. And at this moment we use the worst language. We began, then we become the real terrorists. We began dropping bombs, the F-bomb, the S-bomb, and the B-bomb, and all these other bombs in our vocabulary because somebody cut us off on the road. This is al ibtila When we go through struggle, you don't use the worst of your vocabulary. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was when he lost his son Ibrahim, and he was holding Ibrahim in his arms, and his son passed away. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said something very profound. Inna la'ayna tadma' wal qalba yahzan wa la naqulu illa ma yurdi rabbuna. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said yes, the eyes are tearing up, the eyes are, are, are tearing up and, and we're crying and the heart is saddened. But we will not say except what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is another secret of al ibtila When you are experiencing trials and affliction, you use the best language, not the worst language. And we look at it, how many times, and two, I'm guilty of this too, someone cuts us off in the world and we become a bigot and a racist at that particular moment. And we began using the worst language, no. Let us turn it around. When we are experiencing al ibtila begin to use the best language in your vocabulary. 
Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. From Allah we come, to Allah we return. This is a, uh, something that's emphasized in the Quran. Whenever you are afflicted with an affliction, you say from Allah we come, to Allah we return. And you begin to use patience. And then also learn to complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than you complain to the people. There was a wise man and he walked by two individuals who were arguing. And one of the individuals were complaining about their situation. How many times have we ran into people who complain? How many times have we been individuals who complain and we complain? This individual was complaining to the, another individual while the other individual listened. And the wise man went past his circle and he came back to the one who's complaining. He said, there's two things that's perhaps taking place. He said, this individual is either your friend or your enemy. He said, if this is your enemy, your complaints only cause them to gloat and cause them happy at your trials, cause them to be happy because of your trials. And if this is your friend, your complaints only burden your friend and only cause them sadness because of what you're going through. So he said, learn to complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the, the sunnah of the anbiya of the prophets, where when they would go through things, they would call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, it, said, it, it, it mentions in the Quran. <coughs> <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that, you know, did we think that we were going to enter into paradise without uh, going through the trials as those who came before us went through? Uh, this is important for us. They went through afflictions. They went through moments of anxiety. They suffered. They suffered. And the NBA, the, the, the messengers, and those who were with them, these aren't just regular individuals. These were the messengers and those who were with them. They cry to Allah, Mata Nasrullah, when is the help of Allah going to come? And many times in the midst of our trials, we're waiting for the help of Allah. When is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to arrive? When is it going to arrive? And these are the same cries that the messengers and those who, were, who accompanied the messengers, they cried, Mata Nasrullah, Allah inna Nasrullah qareeb. The help of Allah is always near. Whenever we're going through something, know that the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always